What's up guys? I hope you're enjoying your weekend. Um, I thought about doing this very short tutorial, uh, hopefully without any edits, about how to create your first, or at least the uh, foundation of your C++ projects that you want to start. Um, and uh, I'm going to do this in CMake. Now, why I slowly switch to using CMake, um, well, number one, it's because it's a multi-platform tool. You might not be able to uh, work with Visual Studio, for example, everywhere on all platforms. And uh, creating your project uh, structure in this tool is extremely useful for, for people who want to create multi-platform apps. Um, obviously, you can simply uh, create a new project in Visual Studio and it will automatically create all the project files that you need. And you can also uh, submit all those project files to Git, for example. And, uh, but, but the thing is that these project files are usually very bulky and uh, most of them aren't useful to you, or at least to, to people who will invariably switch platforms. So, um, I'm going to show you a way how to do this manually and uh, how, do you, how to do this using the CMake uh, build system. Um, CMake is actually not a build system, although it is sometimes referred to as a build system. It creates build files. It basically creates the project files necessary for uh, opening up the Visual Studio project and navigating through your project altogether. Um, so first we're going to create a dummy project. Um, my project. And we're going to introduce a source folder Uh, where our source files are, are going to be located. So we can create a CPP file, say my main. This is where our application executable will be compiled and built. And we also, if we're using CMake, we also need to create a um, CMake lists file, which needs to be formatted exactly in this way, otherwise CMake won't recognize it. And here you will basically specify all the project properties um, at the root node of your project, obviously. So here's where you specify the CMake minimum version. Now, it depends on what kind of features you want. I use the 3.14 minimum. Um, and then we create a, a variable that uh, is recognized as the project name. So that will be my project and we can also add a version. 1.0. Oh. Okay, and um, if you want, you can also specify uh, C++ standard. Obviously, some of us may be tempted to uh, remain in the domain of the default compilers from, say, C++ 11. But if you install Visual Studio with all of its components with, with latest compilers, it should be 19.29, I guess, at this point. Um, and you want to use the latest features, you probably should use the, the latest uh, C++ standard. So I'm just going to copy paste this and make the standard required. So this will propagate throughout our entire project. Now, um, this will obviously not work in any way unless we add the executable itself. So we put add executable. 
we attach it to the variable project name. And our source file is called mymain.cpp. So this will be our executable. So it's basically a very simple um, setup. And we're going to fire up the CMake uh, GUI app, the desktop version. And first, we need to specify where the source files are located. So we're just going to copy paste this location in there. And um, we may or may not include the build directory. Um, if we don't include the build directory, which is the target directory where the where the project files are going to be generated, um, CMake will automatically ask us to create one or at least created by default. And it's called build because it's that that's the name uh, of the of the folder that it creates by default. Uh, so we're, we're going to keep this empty. Um, and now we just have to configure. So I'm using the latest uh, Visual Studio. Um, and the 64 bit platform that refers to uh, the amount of memory required to uh, pointer addresses. Um, unless you're familiar with this concept. Uh, and if you're using a mixed uh, project, for example, with uh, some C sharp code or, or managed C code, you may switch um, to a different compiler option, but I'll stick to basic uh, default native compilers. Um, I, I seem to have uh, created some... Oh yeah. This uh, happened because I didn't specify the uh, source file location. Um, Let's do this one more time. And what happened here, it created a CMake files. So apparently the build folder is not going to be created. So we're just going to move them, the generated CMake files here into a so-called build folder. And um, I guess let's add the build folder in. We should write one more time and we should be all set. Okay, so this is how our project uh, files are going to look like. We generate them by CMake. Um, you can open up the solution file here. But you can also uh, open up the solution file directly from the uh, desktop app of CMake. And we can see our solution with uh, two additional components, all build and zero check. Um, I can explain their, uh, their uh, use in some other video, but for now, we need to uh, retarget my project, that's the name of the project that we created, as a startup project. Otherwise, the app won't exactly work. So here we have our main. We can actually uh, create a very simple hello world example. actually works. Um, if I didn't set the uh, uh, 
startup project as the the app that um, I'm trying to build, uh, it won't work. It will work in the following fashion. Let's say I said I'll build as a startup project. It will trigger this uh, access denied error. So I need to uh, set this. When I'm working with my project and I want to run it while debugging, for example, uh, I need to set this as startup project because that's the 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 fixed point where Visual Studio actually creates all the build files and executables. Now, let's say we want to uh, create something a little more complicated. So instead of having a very simple project structure with just the source files in one directory, we can also add, for example, a new folder called another project. You can create as many as you can, as you want, for example. And you also have to create a CMake lists file here. Now, what we do here is that we um, add subdirectory to, um, but I don't need to specify the project name, so I'll just add the subdirectory called another project. And um, I also need to uh, link this project to the main project uh, so that the linker uh, knows um, what sort of dependencies there are. So I will invoke a target um, target link libraries, which will generate a uh, uh, library files necessary for this. Um, it works differently if you want to create dynamically linked libraries, DLLs, but for now uh, let's just stick to simple static libraries. So um, we attach to the project name variable uh, the name of the link library which will be called another project the name of the library that I want to add. You will also be able to add multiple uh, link libraries separated by white spaces into this command. Um, and that's it for the root CMake lists. And now we go to the branch CMake lists where I need to specify what what the project name is going to be and um, uh, what its source files are going to look like. So basically, um, I don't need to create, uh, I don't need to specify CMake version unless I will require some specific features in this branch. Uh, but for now, let's just create this project called uh, another project. And um, I will need to add a library uh, in this directory as well. But the reason why I'm invoking this command is that uh, I want the library to contain something. So it will contain some headers and some, some source files. Uh, so let's... Let's create a header so we're going to attach a header here and uh, I'm going to use a global file attachment command for CMake so file global with flag global and now we'll create another variable which will be called another project. Uh, let's just copy paste this 
so that there's no typos. Um, CRC, and um, I want to add headers and CPP files here. So I'll just uh, specify the extensions required for this. So that's the types of files that this library will expect. Now, um, I will, to the project name, I can also use the project name variable, but let's just copy paste this. And to the project name, I will attach the name of the variable specified here. That's the file specification variable for CMake. And uh, let's check this one more time. So I, I've attached the link library, uh, I've attached the subdirectory, and uh, there's a uh, file specifier. Um, now, uh, one more thing. Unless we want something uh, like this error, where CMake is unable to determine the link or language, you might want to, if you specify that you're looking for CPP files, you should have at least one CPP file here. Because that's, I guess, where, um, where the executable is created. So the C++ needs um, CPP files to actually generate uh, an executable component when it's built. Um, so at this point, I can just uh, reconfigure and regenerate and reopen the solution so that I see how it looks. And I also see another project with its source file and header that I attached. Now, obviously, I can attach additional directories. And the way I'll do this, let's take a look on the uh, root CMake lists. The way I'll do this is um, I'll just keep invoking add subdirectory calls for uh, additional components. Uh, I won't do any modifications to this command, but um, as I mentioned earlier, uh, if I want to link libraries, I will need to uh, invoke them in this command, attaching them to the project name variable, and um, it will be followed by uh, the names of the sub-projects that I will invoke. And they will have these this, this uh, CMake lists uh, configuration, obviously. All of them need to have them. Um, so, uh, these uh, uh, project names need to be obviously separated by white spaces and the CMake um, generator will generate the respective project files that you need. Um, so in case there's any questions, feel free to write in the, in the comments and uh, if you're interested in more content like this, feel free to subscribe or hit the like button. Cheers.